All right, so let's take a look the following example. So let's say we want to classify the critical points of the following function. We're going to do f of x is 100 over x plus x. Okay. So we want to do this one using second derivative test. So first thing we got to do, we still have, we got to do the first derivative because we've got to find those critical points, right? Find the critical numbers. So f prime, right, derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. So we have minus 100 over x squared plus 1. And here we might choose to write that 1 as x squared over x squared. So we have a common denominator. We get x squared minus 100 over x squared. And of course, we can factor that. x minus 10, x plus 10 over x squared. Good. OK. So that means we have, well, two critical numbers, right? f prime of x equals 0, 4x equal to plus or minus 10. Right? Um, f prime is undefined at the origin, is undefined when x equals 0, but 0 is not in the domain of our function, so that's not a critical number. right? Uh, 10 and minus 10 are the only critical numbers that we look at, and they both fit the criteria here for the second derivative test. So now we want to move to the second derivative and look at the sign. Okay. So let's find f double prime. Now, if you're smart, you're not going to take the derivative here. You've got to do quotient rule. It's a bit of a pain. Much easier to do it there. Okay? f double prime is going to be, so this, of course, is, just as a reminder, um, we could write that as minus 100x to the minus 2. So power rule, 2 comes down. We get 200x subtract 1 from the exponent x to the minus 3, right? 200 over x cubed. And the only place where we get a sign change for the second derivative is at 0, at that, you know, we have a vertical asymptote there, right? But we can see that at that asymptote, um, if x is positive, x cubed is positive, and if x is negative, x cubed is negative. So we have a sign change at the asymptote, right? changes from negative to positive, OK? So that means that f double prime at minus 10 is negative. So that means that at minus 10 and f of minus 10, that's going to be a local max. Suppose we could work out what f of minus 10 is, right? 100 divided by minus 10, minus 10, minus 10 more. So this is minus 10. 10 minus 20. So that's going to be a relative maximum. And f double prime at 10 is positive. So at 10 and f of 10, which is 10, 20, um, that's going to be A minimum, right? Um, now, this is one of these ones where you might be thrown off by the fact that, um, oops, sorry, negative 20 here, right? You have a maximum with a y value of negative 20 and a minimum with a y value of, of plus 20, right? That seems wrong, right? How could the maximum be smaller than the minimum? But remember, these are local extreme values, local min, local max. Um, and, and the reason that it's like that is that if you were to look at the graph, remember you got that asymptote at the origin, right? So what you're going to see is that you have this maximum here because the graph goes like that, right? And it goes like that, right? So the minimum is indeed above the maximum. So once you look at the graph, it makes sense.